Shalom. Prophesying to the wind reloaded will be with you live on AM 1370 WLTH Radio every other Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there. All right, all right, all praises. So, for y'all that don't know, my name is Officer Abishai, and to my left, Officer Asa, and to my right, Soldier Judah. All praises. Hey, make sure you brothers, you sisters, call in. The telephone number is 219-885-1371. I say it again, it's 219-885-1371. We have a school located on the west side of Chicago. The address is 4339 West Division Street. We can also be contacted if you want to contact us directly outside of the radio show at 855-484-4842 and our extension for our branch is 712. All right. So we're going to get into it. Um, all praise for another day. Yes, sir. We get to go into the scriptures and show our people the true solutions to who to the things that plague us within our community within the bible so we're going to go through a couple things first and foremost who are we we're israel united in christ and we teach the true biblical nationality of the blacks hispanics and native americans and who are we we are the israelites according to the bible the real people of the book when moses parted the red sea it was our forefathers that was walking on dry lands. That's, right. That's our message, and we will prove that message. Hey, give me the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 21. I want to open up with that. The book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21. Uh-huh. Produce your cause. Uh-huh. Save the Lord. So here's what we, uh, as we've done these shows, we ask the people that have other solutions outside of what we're saying, to produce your calls. Right. That's what the Lord said. He said, make them produce their calls. Go ahead. Bring forth your strong reason. Give us a strong reason why outside of the scriptures, something else is better for the betterment of our people. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's religion, if it's economics, whatever it is, bring forth your strong reason. Go ahead. Say if the king of Jacob, uh -huh. let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them. Hey, listen to what it says. It says, let them show us the former things. This is what you don't get in these other organizations. You don't get them tying history to our current conditions today. This is a challenge from God to everybody else with a philosophy that does not match the Bible. Read it. And know the latter end of them. Uh huh. Or declare us things for to come. Or declare us what's going to happen in the future. Right. When you go to these different, uh, whether it's politics, whether it's the educational system, whether it's religion, nobody can tell us the things that are going to happen in the future. There's only one book in the world that tells you what is going to happen before it happens. That's the Holy Bible. That's Go ahead. Right. Show the things that are to come hereafter uh -huh. that we may know that ye are God. He says, show us the things that's going to happen in the future so that we know that what you're saying is of God. Go ahead. Yay. Do good. Or do evil. He said, pick one. Because in a lot of these organizations and a lot of the things that our people cleave to, these different delusions that our people choose, you have good and you have bad in the same spot at the same time. No, 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 no. The Lord said, do what? Do good or do evil. He said, do good or do evil. Go ahead. That we may be dismayed uh -huh. and behold it together. Uh huh. Behold. Ye are of nothing uh -huh. and your work of naught. Here's what it's saying. It's saying ye are of nothing. The things that we put our time, energy, efforts into, our faith into, we have learned over the process of time with it being 2021 
that these things have led us to nothing as a nation what? of people. That's right. All right. So, go ahead. An abomination is he that chooseth you. And what happens is when we choose these things over the counsel of God, we make ourselves an abomination to our God. So who are we? Because if we're putting a challenge out for everybody else to explain the form of things, I feel like we should have to explain the form of things. So give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. The who are we? We are the Israelites. We are the Israelites. Don't forget, call in. Call in. Go ahead, soldier. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Uh-huh. But it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So it says it will come to pass, meaning in the future, if the Israelites did not listen to the voice of the Lord. I got to pause for a second. Because a lot of our people don't understand. So I'm going to make it plain for you. What you know as so-called African-American history, what you know as black history, is actually Bible prophecy. That's right. Everything that you know that happened to us during the Jim Crow era, during the slave, the transatlantic, the sub-Saharan slave trade, during the time of Rosewood, during the time of Black Wall Street, all of these atrocities that happened to us that we take as our normal history, you can read it in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, as the prophecy for the Israelites. That's right. Go ahead, right. read it. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, read. that all these curses shall come upon thee, and overtake thee. When you read the book of Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11, this is the path that the Israelites chose. They chose not to keep the commandments. Therefore, God must make good on his promises that curses would come upon them. Read 16 for me. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Now, we, we read cursed shall thou be in the city and our brains can't always equate because our level of oppression is normalized. Mm -hmm. When you live a certain way for so many years, it's normal that you walk into the grocery store and you can smell the meat in the grocery store before you get to the meat section. It's normal that somebody right there is spazzing out because they high on some type of drug. That's normal that the, the, the potholes in the middle of the street. But no, God said that's curses. How do you know? You go to Valparaiso, you go to Hobart, you go to Crown Point. And the conditions all of a sudden in their cities are completely different from our city. Bring it out. Our cities, no matter if it's in Indiana, Illinois, New York, when you go to the spots that are populated by the blacks and Hispanics, it is in turmoil and horrible conditions. What does that point? The curses that the Bible speaks about. Read 17. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Listen to what it's saying. What is your basket and store? Because we're going to get into later in the next segment, we're going to get into some delusions that our people have chosen. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into three major delusions that our people choose over the Bible. Mm -hmm. Bring it out. And they wholeheartedly stick to those delusions, even though the outcome has been the same for generations. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So curse shall be thy basket and store. They have to have campaigns that say support black businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to go to other people just to make enough money so, to sustain ourselves, to sustain our wives, sustain our children. And how does this make us the Israelites? Other nations, when you look at, let's for, for instance, let's look at the Chinese. They have set up communities all over the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Call them Chinatowns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have their own bank. It don't matter if it's Bank of America. Mm -hmm. Guess what the writing on the wall is? Chinese. It's in Chinese. Yeah. They have their own grocery stores with their own imports and exports. Mm -hmm. They have a sense of economic stability that the blacks and Hispanics do not possess in this land. This is reality. This is reality. What are we proving? That what the Lord said would happen to the Israelites in Deuteronomy 28, we live in it today. That's, That's what right. we prove. That's right. All right. Hold that. Get me a uh, verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Here's what verse 48 is going into. And we're going to touch it a little later. The social economic conditions of blacks and Hispanics. 
Watch this. Verse 48. Read that. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. The scriptures say that because we would not serve God, which we still choose today not to serve our God. Therefore, we will serve our enemies in what? Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger. In hunger. Now, social economic condition. Listen to what I'm saying. The black and Hispanic race does not have the resources mm -hmm. to feed their own people. Listen to what I'm If the other nations stop providing food for us today, us as a people will starve to death. We do not own the agriculture. We do not own the grocery stores. We do not own the farmland to be able to sustain ourselves. Therefore, when it comes to food for us as a nation, we serve our enemies to make sure that we can put food in our bellies. That's right. Hmm. Yeah. Next one. And in thirst. Same thing when it comes to water supplies, aquifers, water reserves. Mm -hmm. If they come and turn your water off right now, what can you do except go to the store and buy more water? The social economic condition of the so-called black man is at zero. Why? 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 And we built this country. What? Why? Because we are under the curses of God. And what you're going to learn today on this radio show is that you cannot use cardinal solutions to fix a spiritual problem. That's right. That's right. right. We have a spiritual problem going on with us and our God. And we trying the cardinal solutions to fix it, and none of them have worked for us yet. So in water, we serve our enemies. If we do not serve our enemies, we do not have the resources to ensure that we have water to drink. This is facts. Ask American Water Company. When you don't pay that bill and they come shut it off, and you on the phone trying your best to negotiate. Come on, man, I got a wife, I got kids. They don't care because your social economic position is that you cannot give your own self water. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in clothing. What are we talking about? The basic essentials to be a human being. Yep. How can a human being live without food? Mm -hmm. How can a human being live without water? Right. How can a human being live without clothing? What he's saying is we basically got to live like cavemen if we don't serve our enemies. Bring it out. Why? Because we broke the laws of our God. Not because uh, uh, of the strength of another nation. Not because of, well, enough of us just ain't voting. Mm -hmm. Not because of, well, if we all went to church and caught the Holy Ghost, then God will be there for us. No, because we refuse to keep our God's laws. We must serve these curses. Keep reading. That's right. And in what of all things? What is one of all things? You want a car? Our people don't produce the cars. Mm -hmm. Inventions and patents, we have to go to them. If we invent, they tell us whether or not we can get a patent mm -hmm. for what comes out of our mind. Mm -hmm. They tell us when our patent expires and other companies get to take our patent and use it. So we got to get permission. Yeah, we got to get permission. Guess what? You want to lead a country? Where you want to go? You take your wife to Jamaica right. on vacation? Guess what you got to get? Permission. Permission slip. A passport to lead a country. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that we would have to serve our enemies in one of all things. What's that? Driver's license. Mm -hmm. You can't just operate on the road, just get a car and just start driving. Not going to happen. And listen to this next part. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck uh -huh. until he have destroyed thee. So this is, this is very, very important, right? Because the yokes of iron was on our neck in chattel slavery. Anybody that's familiar with slavery, which is something that an atrocity is happening, they try not to teach our kids. Mm -hmm. They don't want to teach our kids the atrocities that they did to us because they know it correlates with the Bible. Right. That's right. This is going to tie one and two together. When you look around the world, why is our people the ones oppressed? Mm -hmm. Look, where's the Chinese Trayvon Martin? Bring it out. Where's the, where's the Japanese Sandra Bear? Can you imagine if it was a, a Arab Tamir Rice in this country? It'd be an uproar. It'd be an uproar. It said that man would put a yoke of iron on your neck until you were destroyed. Meaning the spirit of the man was broken. Mm -hmm. 
no connection to your own self, no connection to your own culture, no connection to your own holidays, no connection to the laws that you kept. They told you you was black. Mm -hmm. They told you you was African-American, Negro, Afro-American. Those, those names did not exist. Mm -hmm. What are we proving? That we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's right. That the curses that Moses gave to the Israelites in the book of Deuteronomy fit us to a T. Right. That's right. Ain't no denying it. God got us jotted down in the book, verse 64. Verse, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people uh -huh. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. What nation? We're not talking about individuals. Right. We're not talking about indentured servitude mm -hmm. where you went to another country and had to pay off a debt and work for a few years. We're talking about being piled on ships and transported around the globe through global slave trades so against your will, against your will, sub-Saharan slave trades, transatlantic slave trades. Read it again. And the Lord shall scatter thee among too, all people. Let me say this. Too much Christianity has made the Bible a fairy tale book. Right. A book about blessings and planting seeds. No, there is a reality in the Bible that comes out when the true men of God teach the Bible. That's right. That you're never going to hear anywhere else. So the Bible says again in, 40, in 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. You can't deny that that happened to us. You cannot deny the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade that we have black so-called Africans, because mm -hmm. that's what they call us, scattered all over the planet. Read. From the one end of the earth, uh -huh. even unto the other. Uh -huh. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And he said, in those countries, when you end up in India, you're going to serve Krishna. Bring it out. When you end up in America, you're going to serve white Jesus. Teach. When you end up in Iran, you're going to serve Allah. Mm -hmm. He said, and when you're scattered, he will make you serve other gods. Read. Which thou nor thy fathers have known. Because our fathers didn't know Krishna. Our fathers didn't know Muhammad. Buddha. Our fathers didn't know Buddha. Mm -hmm. Our fathers didn't know Jesus Christ to be a white man. Right. These are new gods that have come newly up, brothers and sisters. What are we giving you? We're giving you back your nationality. Pay attention. That's We're right. giving you back your nationality. That's what this first segment is about. Right. With biblical and historical proof, we can prove that we are the true Jews of the Bible. That's right. We can prove that we are the Israelites and that this is where our people need to be. Is that it on that? Even wood and stone. Even wood, Christianity. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Think about this. You got a father. You love your pops. Right? I love my pops. Mm -hmm. Right? He ended up getting shot down in the street. Mm -hmm. Dang. Tragic. God forbid. My father's still alive. He got shot down with an Uzi. So I go and I get a gold-plated Uzi. And I put it on the chain. And I walk around for the rest of my life with that Uzi on the chain. And somehow that represents me honoring my father. See, that sounds but that sounds like buffoonery when I say it like that. Right. But that's what Christianity does. Bring it out. That cross was a method of execution, capital punishment that the Romans used during their rule on the earth. It's a murder weapon. It's a murder. It is the it is the historical equivalent to an electric chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm to getting a lethal injection needle. Right. And out of everything Christ did, we chose to take the cross that he was massacred, beat, mm -hmm. torn to shreds for, and say, this represents God. That is a curse, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Read that again. Even wood. Even that Christian cross that you hold so dearly that they nailed my Lord and Savior to. That has never been a symbol of righteousness anywhere in the Bible. Bring it up. That is Christianity. That is even wood. Go ahead. And stone. And the Kaaba stone, a meteorite that fell from the earth. Mm -hmm. You must take your Hajj to Mecca and walk around it seven times, bow down and kiss it. Mm -hmm. 
See, the Bible has us to a T, brothers and sisters. And the reality is we're living in the last days. That's why this new knowledge is being presented to That's give right. you a chance to repent. So let's, let's, okay, so we the Israelites, right? According to the scriptures. Last one. Let's get 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt, when you read Exodus 20 and 2, it just symbolizes slavery. Egypt comes from the word Egyptos, which means bondage. Mm -hmm. Egyptians were known for being mm -hmm. slaves, for having slaves. Yep. So when the Bible says the Lord will bring you in Egypt again, it's simply saying he's going to take you back into bondage. How? With ships. With what? With ships. Come on now. Come on now. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. hey, I spent 25 years in the Christian church and never knew slave ships was in the Bible. This don't fit nobody else. Period. Who else was stacked on slave ships? Bruh, you know why they call them cargo slave ships? Because before they put our black bodies on them, they would carry other goods. Right. That thing was built to carry oil, wine, spices, Rum, rums. They said, take all of that off, push them Negroes on them shelves. Mm -hmm. And stacked us on the shelves by the boatload and shipped us around the world. What the Bible say? Scattered us to the four <laughs> corners of the earth. This is the reality. And look, we jumping around. If we had enough time, we could start at Deuteronomy 28 and 15 mm -hmm. and read all the way down and correlate it to us every day of the week. Yeah. <clears throat> right. We'd be here all day. Right. The Absolutely. Bible documents who the Israelites are. We ain't hidden. We ain't the lost nothing. We found. That's, that's right. right. And the blacks and Hispanics, that's you. <clears throat> exactly. You ain't never been black. Right. Black is my pants. Right. right. Black is the color of my boots. Right. Black is a color in a crayon box. Right. You can't go to O'Hare Airport, Gary Airport, and say, hey, give me a ticket to black. What people speak the language black? You ever met right. one of them? <laughs> no. But that's our nationality? Right. Or maybe we're African-American because Jesse Jackson named us that in the 1980s. Right. So who are we? The biblical Jews? That's right. The actual Jews that walked out of Egypt with Moses, that is us. That's, right. That's what I'm telling you. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships uh -huh. by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Now, I want to get one historical book. Give me Babylon of Timbuktu. Give me that page. before, Because we're getting ready to take a break. Don't forget, brothers and sisters, if you want to, you can call in. The number's 219-885-1371, all right? Feel free to call in. Read this. I want to get a historical count of what happened to us during 70 AD when Jerusalem was sacked. This is our history. Read that. This is the book of Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Winter, Let's page get 84. Yep. In the year 65 BC. What is this, historical facts? Go ahead. The Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem uh -huh. in 70 AD. General Vespasian and his son, Titus, put an end to the Jewish state. They whooped our behinds as prophesied in Luke chapter 21 for another day. Go ahead. With great slaughter. Uh-huh. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, uh -huh. many outrageous and atrocities were committed against the resident, the residue of the people. Because when you read Luke 21, Christ said, if you in Jerusalem, leave. And if you see the army surrounding Jerusalem, don't try to go back. Just stay away. Mm -hmm. But the people that stayed were slaughtered. You can find this on YouTube. They have documentaries. This is real history. Listen to what the book says. This is a historical account. We ain't write it. Historians did. Watch this. Go ahead. During the period from, from Pompeii to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews Fled into Africa. Wait a minute. So if in 70 AD, a million Jews fled into Africa, mm -hmm. how many Jews would be there in 1619 when they started taking them? Bring it out. You're telling me you got over 1,500 years for them to mm -hmm. be fruitful and multiply? Right, right. In Africa? What are we reading? We tie in the historical books to the Bible. Yes, the Bible is a real book. Right. But I know some of y'all don't. The Bible ain't enough. 
Right. Because the Christianity has made it a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring other evidence. Read it. Fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. And what? Slavery. So they were taking us as slaves. So we ran into Egypt, into Africa where we could hide. When you read other accounts, go ahead. The slave markets were full. Of what? Of black Jewish slaves. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I thought we was Negroes. You know why they have to say black Jewish? Because the common thought when you say Jews is that they are not black. Mm -hmm. right. So the author of the book has to put it in there as a black Jewish slaves to deny any thought that is talking about somebody else. Mm -hmm. A group of Caucasians could not hide inside of Africa. Bring right? it out. And Roman, Rome had that power. Remember, Northern Africa was Carthage. Mm -hmm. Rome had conquered Carthage already. So Rome had military power inside of Africa right. that could have hunted down those Jews that were fleeing. You know why they were able to hide? Because they were dark, just like the Hermetic people in those lands at the time. That's right. So who are we? This is prophesied to the wind reloaded. That's right. That's and right. we have thoroughly explained that the blacks and Hispanics of this country, children of the slave trade, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That, right. That's right. And we are going through these atrocities because we have broke God's laws. Today, we're going to show you how God chooses your delusion for you. And we're going to show you that these things are not the solution that we need in order to get better. All right. I'm Officer Abishai. Are y'all ready to take a quick break? Let's do it. Let's you do ready? It. Hey, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs> 